see if there's anything else. And uh, that's a fun one too. Um, I think this was at the Hale Art Gallery. Little you know, um, McGreet, if I can see that, or Clairvoyance. So uh, that's a cool one too. Um, before we lived here on one of our trips, I keep these books forever. Um, a sketch of some, uh, I think this was a morning uh, sketch of some palm trees. All right. Um, one of the things that I wanted to point out here tonight, and the thing that actually got me started on this whole idea of showing this work, is this. One time at the Palace of Legion of Honor in San Francisco, um, even though I didn't see any of this work, um, I found this book in the gift shop and I couldn't help myself, I had to buy it. So, Surratt, uh, famous for pointillism, uh, but in his preparation of his work, he did some drawings and his drawings are really quite exquisite. Um, Paul Clay, from Munich, and um, there are studies that he would use a lot of these in um, in his paintings. Interesting to me that the faces do not have details, um, like Rembrandt's uh, work. There is um, room for your imagination, for you to fill in the blanks of what are you looking at. Um, but the thing that got me most excited, Edward Hopper, uh, SF MoMA, the thing that got me most excited was these works here on very heavy and nubby paper with uh, Conti crayon, with wax crayons. He started these uh, drawings that are pretty much, um, they're just silhouettes, they're not line drawings necessarily, and he's using negative space a bunch. And, uh, you know, in something like this, it's almost, even though he's drawn this figure, um, the, we only see the arm because the shadow is there. Um, and the same is true of this, uh, this man. There actually are dark, dark spots. I don't know if you can see that through the phone. Uh, but there are dark spots where his eyes would be um, and the mouth, but it's really, you know, you feel like you've met him in a dark alley. Really moody. Um, Kandinsky, I don't remember. Oh, I think maybe at the Yale Art Gallery. Um, and another wonderful drawing where he uses a little more line. Um, but I also wanted to point out that he does, uh, oh, I have two of these. Um, this is, uh, if you've seen Le Grand Jatte, the uh, Sunday in the Park with George painting, um, Here's the lady that's in that painting. So this is a study for that painting. So he is specifically using this kind of work as a way of developing his images that he then puts together to create his paintings. Um, it's a lot more uh, thought out than I do a lot of times. Um, more Paul Klee. Uh, and these, I think, are also pretty interesting. Um, and again, it's the negative space that makes this figure. And um, I really love this work, and I hope someday, um, I really do hope someday, I'm lucky enough to, um, to, find, um, to find this uh, these works somewhere that I can actually see them. Okay. Um, I'll talk about me for a minute. I wanted to show a couple of other drawings. This is also from that same residency. Uh, but I love this particular grouping because uh, I was out one day and I saw this lovely group of flowers. It was uh, May and everything was in bloom. Flowers were small and pretty and bright. Um, so I found this really lovely thing and I took a picture of it. And um, I don't remember any anymore what order I did these drawings in but I have a smaller version and a larger version of this drawing. Can you show this drawing here? Um, and then a third one that was a pen and ink 
uh, version of it with a little bit of watercolor. Um, probably watercolor pencil in there. A um, couple other drawings in this book that are just um, inspired by that same area. But just, um, I felt like doing these drawings because I wanted to draw tall branches because I'd been in this place for a few days and um, I kept seeing these wonderful branches uh, all, all throughout. So, um, all right. What I think I'd like to do now is um, I want to take a walk out into the gallery um, and show you some new stuff that's happening out there. Um, and then come back in here and show you something that I'm working on now, a, a, a series. Um, first, uh, we have a new um, artist in the gallery. His name is Stu Berger. He's a photographer. Um, these are tulips from the Queen Wilhelmina Tulip Garden in San Francisco's Golden Gate Park. And this um, is the sun setting over the Pacific Ocean at Ocean Beach um, behind some scaffolding. Um, right, Ocean Beach in San Francisco. There are lots of ocean beaches, um, as we all know. So, but this was um, where we were living, actually. And so from inside of the scaffolding, um, we got some really wonderful sunsets. Um, and the scaffolding was up for close to a year. Okay, so follow me. So um, I've rearranged what's here in the gallery, but if you remember, if you have a good memory, um, this is a new uh, series that I'm working on that are on wood panels. Uh, it's uh, maple plywood, which is nice and flat. Um, and so I'm still developing these ideas, but this was the first one that I was ready to put on the wall and show. There's a little space uh, where they stand out from the wall, which I, I like. Uh, shadows and uh, these are my uh, the, these are soap stained canvases and some of this wood assemblage that I've been working on uh, as well and one more let me come over here and one more here is a painting that I did that combines some of these different ideas that I've been working on it's three parts uh, Done that, and I have shown that already, but behind uh, Stu are some new um, paintings on the tea. Tea Santora and uh, high tea. So um, you sent me a wonderful uh, artist statement, which I'm going to read most of it. He calls this the Quarantine Series. Um, it's the series reflects the very surreal atmosphere we are living in. We are cut off from each other, our families, our usual energy. There is a sense of dislocation in place. The muted color serves as a mood and play of drama. Um, they add to the sense of visual dislocation. Illusions of space with the background and foreground interacting to reinforce that sense of the surreal of not knowing where we are. And I think I can really relate to that feeling. Um, T has used linear forms as they evoke a kind of architecture and formality to create a perspective extending in the distance and reflecting our inner space. Like windows to a messy world we don't quite recognize, one we need to protect from and one we long to re-engage with. Really cool. Really cool, really interesting in the bottom of the world. Shall we head back? We have a couple more minutes, and I want to show you a series, part of a series that I'm working on, um, which are also drawings. They combine. 
they're on the drawing board here. Uh, they combine um, the geometry that I love and uh, do in a lot of my paintings um, and with drawing. So I sit at the drawing table and they um, evolve as I go. Um, I've, got, I've got one that I'm working on here. It's actually, I guess I can show that it's not finished, but I'm getting close to finished on this one. It needs a little punctuation, I think. Um, lots of colors. I love these bright colors, of course. Another one that I finished uh, a week or two ago. Um, and in this section here, where my color is not solid, I use these wonderful um, color sticks uh, that we got this summer when we were traveling. And uh, here's another that I think was the first of this series. So um, I'm hoping to get these framed uh, and matted and framed. I think they'll look really sharp. So I love the geometry and um, I, just, I just love looking at the, those different things. Uh, so are there any other thoughts? Have there been any comments, Stu, that you can repeat? I have a couple of things here as well that I can show. But um, well, this this is something that can go with my Surat uh, story, and um, another thing on a vacation where I bought myself a Conti crayon and took it along with this sketch pad and decided to work in a similar fashion. Um, as Surat to see how that worked out. So um, leaving a little bit of uh, open there. Um, and here's another example. This is actually, as I remember, um, was a, a mountainscape from here, from Palm Springs area. Um, I used to draw a lot of these when we would come down here at, as frequently as we did. So. Um, so that, as I continue to work with the drawing, um, I do have a goal in mind, or a, a hope to understand a little bit. Um, I'm inspired by Basquiat, but no matter how hard I try, I can't make work like this. I think his work is really interesting. It looks primitive, but it's certainly not. Um, and there's something gorky from this past summer. Um, it's, it's certainly, even though it looks disorganized, it certainly is not. Um, and his work is really interesting, and he includes these drawings on top of things, and painted lines, I'm sure, but still includes the drawings. And no matter how hard I try, I have a hard time getting that loose um, with the things that I do. But anyway, so there you are. This is my talk about drawing, and uh, I'm, I'm loving having uh, this space to work in and, uh, and also the space to show the work. Um, and I am really looking forward to uh, the, ne the next time that we can all do this in person. Um, as fun as this is, and this is fun for me, as fun as this is, um, it's much better when everyone's in, uh, together in person. So uh, cheers and uh, Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon.